Hello and welcome RC Shim on the flight field to fly the Aura 7 with these three lithium ion packs. The firing pack uh, has around 19 cycles on it. New 8 amp hour 6 cell from iFlight and the 5 amp hour 6 cell from Upgrade Energy Tech. All those packs were provided by the vendors. Thanks guys. They didn't influence my video at all as always or as never. <laughs> the simple plan is to make three circles around which are roughly one kilometer, lock the milliamps that I suck out of these batteries, also lock the volt curve and a volt sag test because this is normally a good sign of how capable the battery is. Which of these packs is the best for you in terms of flight time? What do you need? Throw such a heavy pack on your copter or are you better off smaller but more agile pack? note on my test setup. If you're curious as how to I lock this stuff, even at the Tango 2 I have full telemetry logging. Basically you set up a switch, in my case it's the arming switch, will also start the recording which is just a function SD logging and in beta flight you have to enable the telemetry. If you need a setup guide, check out the link in the description from Oscar Liang. He really does a great job on explaining this. So let's get it on here. Okay, I will aim for 50 to 60 kph. And I do my laps and I will do three laps. So I'm quite constantly pulling 8 amps in this kind of flight in the beginning of the pack. So you have to note, if you fly longer, the voltage will sag. The flight controller will compensate this with using more amps. Because amps times voltages is uh, the power that you use to fly. Feels like I'm flying too slow, but anyhow. So we have a slight breeze today. I think I have a tailwind now. Oh, and there's a crow down there, but I will not fly. Don't, get, don't throw any distractions on me. I'm on a scientific mission. <laughs> We've used 180 ma in this first lap. Oh, 190. Okay, I will try to land efficiently and consistently. Hey, fuck! Anatans. Ooh. This battery was not happy about the volt sack test. Later on, if I have enough time, I will empty the packs as well. But it's more important to get scientific data. It's also quite important to get a good landing angle, not too low. Okay, second battery on my way of the 50 kph, three laps. And we're pulling, yeah, around the 7 to 8 amps. But we were also pulling with the other pack because they are quite similar in terms of weight. Let's do a one. It's really inviting you to to fly acrobatic with the 
More powerful battery. It's more powerful, more agile than the firing pack. But I will bring it in for a landing now. Okay, this is the heavy pack. 800 and what? 90 gram. It feels a bit more angry with it. But it also it flies like on rails. Positively and negatively. <laughs> So let me just concentrate on my 50 kphs here and I'm at 11 amps, 12 amps, I don't know if 13 amps, between 11 and 30 amps is what I read out but you will see the beautiful graph. So this is stupid, doing a throttle punch out with this fat battery, I hope the copter doesn't explode. It actually didn't went below 3 volt, which is, yeah, this is a 2P configuration, so it has more cells in parallel. It feels so tight with this big bird, <laughs> but it isn't. I didn't even look at my voltage yet, but I'm at 3.7. Even would be okay for a LiPo. So, you got so much flight time out of this fat pack that it's really a no-brainer to fly around wherever you want. That's the best thing. Have an ND filter on and fly quite low to the ground. Get this juicy motion blur. Flight with the ugly, no, with the, with a big battery. And I've recorded 26 minutes. And I didn't even drain the battery all the way down. It's just comfortably warm. If you arrive at 3 volt per cell you should really consider landing. At around 3 volts I did some, not punch outs, but throttle play around with and I still felt in control. I think I saw 6700 ma out of the 8000. This is 426 the firing pack with 4000 ma. This is 5000 ma, same size, 450 grams. And this is 893 now. It's double the size. 6S 2P. So 12 battery cells in there. These three packs all use 21700 battery cells. Standard pack here is an 18650. A bit smaller and four cell. In terms of flying, of course I felt this being the bit older pack and the cheaper pack. It delivers. I've flown it now 20 times or something like this and it's reliable. The dark lithium, it really, at times it feels like flying a LiPo in a good way. So you have a good amount of punch with it. They also, they didn't sag a lot despite their heavy weight or the heavy weight of the whole system. So I was surprised by this, but not too much surprise because this is a 2P configuration so you have more cells to pull power from. It's labeled as a 4-5 four, four milliamp. They did this intentionally so we could get these batteries on board in the carry-on luggage because it says 99.9 watt hours which is the limit for taking them with you. Is adding so much weight and more capacity? Is it diminishing returns? I get 26 minutes out of the larger packs and 21 minutes out of the smaller pack. If you don't need the extra few minutes, then go with the smaller pack. Is I think that's that's what, what, what I would do. Because here you have 21 minutes, which is, which is still killer, at least on my Aura 7, where I have a very low system weight and no GoPro. 
I just used the O3 and it looks awesome. By the way, all the video clips that you've seen today, the flight footage is just DVR, it's not even the O3, O3's uh, onboard recording. Having the 21 minutes and still an agile copter, a powerful copter is yeah so much convenience that I think I would recommend the Dark Lithium, the Bot Grinder edition from Upgrade Energy Tech. And trust me, those those guys, they really know what they're doing in terms of building those batteries and making good decisions on, on the workbench. Now head over to the data. Okay, first the somewhat older Farin frames, 4 amp hours, Molycell P42A based pack. It worked quite nice. And in comparison, the Upgrade Energy Tech pack has a slightly higher base voltage. And then the iFlight pack, of course, it has a higher orange line. The amperage needed to stay afloat was higher because the craft was just so much more heavy. But also the voltage level is significantly higher because it's a 2P configuration. Here you see the comparison of the three lines, green being the farin a bit below, the yellow upgrade energy tech one, and the blue is the iFlight pack. The volt sag test. It was a bit surprising to me that the upgrade energy pack also sagged quite low, below 16 or at 16.5 volts. Also surprising that the iFlight stayed up so high with 18.6, 18.7 and it went up all the way to 120 amps on this throttle punch. The firing pack, uh, I have it now for almost a year or for a bit more than a year. It works quite nice and it is really cheap. It's like 60 bucks. That's, that's damn cheap. If you demand too much from them, they might get a bit hot here because they are not just copper plates. Whereas the upgrade energy tech thingies here, they are built better with copper plates, with proper cells. Now packed 5000 ma into this and they even have this double pack with 10,000 ma and not too much more than the iFlight 8000 so that's a really <laughs> extreme long range option there as well. Last but not least, to me it was a surprise how good they held up which comes at the price of being quite heavy. Of course you feel this in the flight characteristics of your copter. But for cruising or long range, it's not a problem that the copter is not so agile anymore because most of the times you just fly straight up to the mountains or some, somewhere. So there this pack is quite nice. And also if you have higher winds up in the mountains on the cliff, uh, on the edge of the cliff for example, high crosswinds with more system weight, uh, you are less prone to the gusts yeah, so definitely long range only or long range pack for me the all-rounder with some power and this is the budget option that's the easiest way to, to put it in my video description you find a lot of details like the specifications of the batteries uh, links of course to the batteries those are not affiliate links okay that's all thanks a lot for watching if you found this video helpful the usual stuff, please consider subscribing if you found my channel today. Maybe even consider joining my Patreon. You don't even see it. Joining my Patreon channel or an easier alternative. If you're in Europe at least and have to shop for FPV stuff anyways, go to fpv24.de or .com. Uh, there will be a link down below. And use my affiliate link for any purchase you make there. So. I'm, I'm not even sure if they, for example, have so bigger packs there. But yeah, anything like antennas or props or whatever you need. Anyways, buy it there with my affiliate links. It helps me, giving me a small amount of commission. But not directly being related to the products that I show here. That's the way that I feel more comfortable with. Please consider this way of supporting my channel. Other than this, just yeah, please keep watching my videos and I will keep making them. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.